cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, not cool, but you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exciting in a weather kind of see. way. Cool for a right. meteorologist to observe. Uh -huh. Exactly. All right, you guys have a great day. You too. Save up for your trip to space. <laughs> um, and we'll keep it going here. It's all about saving up we're going to have to do for this. <laughs> we are going to get you through the mid-morning hours, help you plan for all the big events ahead this week and weekend. Absolutely indeed. A lot to follow, including our front that continues to make its way uh, there into the uh, East Coast, uh, bringing with us a few showers. Could spark off a few stronger storms. I think the big, bigger deal with this is the chillier temperatures coming in behind it. Yes, and, and that's affecting a lot of you from the Great Lakes area, Northeast, get ready. So they have come up short, yeah. but I mean, 99, 100. Was yeah. it EF, did they rate it already? I guess they did. Yeah, EF zero. EF zero. Yeah. You can see EF zero, it's a tornado. Yeah. It can cause damage. Well, yesterday we were talking about being prepared for this kind of weather. Over the weekend, Texas offered um, all the supplies tax-free going in you know, for your storm kit. So we asked you, what do you put in your storm kit? And you've been chiming in with your comments. This one coming in from uh, Nebro. It's got to be a couple years at least. <laughs> we'll see. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. America's Morning Headquarters is going to get you through the mid-morning hours, help you plan for the big events ahead this week and weekend. That's right, indeed. As we work our way through this Tuesday, lots to follow here for us, including a cold. All the time. Duck take is like the one thing that you have for If you have that, any you can do almost anything. You were actually... <laughs> Uh, Wayne Rosenfield said... Never too late yeah. to get going. Um, well, I guess it is too late, but to start it. Yeah, if you I mean, just one. go back last year. They had tornadoes, they had Ida and the remnant rain, yeah. and it was, it, New Jersey had a tough year last year. Well, we've got more today, though, and we've got storms gathering around the fire in today's big deal. Heavy rain has Carolina. So here's our virtual view. We're looking out over St. Michael's Cathedral, Broad Street area, um, and yeah, the scene is quiet for now, but later today... Here we go. Clouds get dark. Storms come. Rain is heavy. In fact, we could see some ponding of water because of that potential of some heavy rainfall. So let's time things out. When do we get to this scenario in Charleston and elsewhere here into the south and east? We have that red zone that stretches from parts of Georgia. It does include Augusta. Charleston, you're in it. Also around Columbia and back towards Charlotte. We've got Richmond with a chance of thunderstorms today. Here's where the line is right now. And at the moment, it's not severe. It's hard to even call it a line of thunderstorms. It's a line of showers and we've got that ongoing this morning approaching you in the Atlanta area get ready some rain is finally going to come on in you'll get some out of this um, but we're going to watch as this gets into the afternoon and it's all about the timing because now we've got some heating going on here the sun will be out for a little bit and so that's going to allow more instability not a big severe outbreak I mean like yesterday there'll be pockets of storms that are a little more feisty some of these could bring some strong damaging winds some of these could bring some small hail all something to look at in Charleston for us it's this evening it's about, you know, 7, 8 o'clock tonight when storms really come through. Um, so your evening plans, get home early. You don't want to be caught out on Broad Street or King Street walking in the rain, right? Let's take you to Raleigh in the Triangle area, Durham, Chapel Hill. We've got showers coming in. Rush hour home, yes, tough timing. Fayetteville, I-95, all going to be wet right through the evening. And then this is just a forecast radar, but I love how um, the model picked up what we've got the front coming through soon after that. And we will be watching for temperature changes then beyond that as well. All right. Let's get to Charlotte. Scattered showers this afternoon. We see this about 3 o'clock or so over the city center, but, you know, back towards the west, Gastonia, Mint Hill, um, Rock Hill. We've got the scattered showers and storms right through the evening. And you can hear that thunder, right? That's that's how it's going to sound off and on. I love the sound effects we got going on with this. It's exactly how it's going to play out. Columbia, bad timing into the afternoon for you. Rush hour home is when we'll have the bulk of the storms. All right, then we get a day or two break, Alex. And then where do we see the next storm system? Watching us. Storms to the north, but to the south, we are going to see thunderstorms and possibly severe weather, especially by the end of the week. So here's what we're watching, and we're going to keep an eye on the area off here. First, Kansas down through uh, the Texas Panhandle into New Mexico. This is a zone that could see some storms, maybe as early as tomorrow. They should be pretty isolated. You'll see this going into the afternoon hours, late afternoon, 4 o'clock or so, thunderstorms, potentially with some hail, some damaging winds, isolated tornado risk. Um, but, you know, they're pretty few and far between. Now, Dodge City, your 7 o'clock not looking good, right? Forecast for tomorrow does have thunderstorms come through. As we get into Thursday, we're going to see a larger area that does have the risk of storms. Some of them could be ongoing through the overnight, but what happens on Thursday is that you know, we see this pattern in our jet stream. We've got a trough of low pressure. That's the energy. This ridge is going to allow temperatures to heat up, but also it's going to help 
our winds turn from the south and that is going to allow the moisture to come back. And that's why Thursday is going to be a busier day because we'll have more moisture in place. 87 in Weatherford, 80 in Wichita, and it's going to be pretty humid out there as we see the, uh, the risk of storms getting enhanced. Friday, even more so. Actually, Wichita, 87 now. Oklahoma City, 90. It's hot under that ridge, but it's also, because we'll get more of a southerly flow, going to be really humid as dew points come back up. So now we're bringing all the ingredients back for possible severe weather. And so by Friday afternoon, remember, we've got that air that is warmer and more humid. Now we've got the players in place like the dry line. And then we've got the warm front and the cold front and this zone, which is the warm sector. So watching all of these as things to lift the air and get thunderstorms going. We're going to be watching the upper level flow, too. Do we have any colder air loft? Does that dig in? Because that'll give us a hail threat. So we'll be watching that. Lots of instability building Friday afternoon, increasing the potential for thunderstorms and of of course, that moisture coming back into the system. So Friday will be the day, Alex, where we're definitely more back into a spring-like pattern. You know, because right now, this front that we have going yeah, on, it's setting kinda, temperatures down below exactly, freezing. Exactly, really yeah. stabilizing things, right. chilling things yeah. down. But yeah, we'll re-fire yeah. things back up. All right, well, we are just days away now from marking 40 years since beginning our commitment to you. There have been a lot of memories over four decades of covering severe weather, hurricane snow, and even sunny days. Here's one. Already come in. Uh, we'll share some of those uh, with you as we head on through the show. All right, how about we get into the out there? Uh, lots of events that will be happening here as we head towards the end of the week, heading into the weekend, including, <laughs> I have to say, um, the tent might be a little too hardcore for me. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that's incredible. It's right? not just saving money either, it's saving stress, right? Yeah. Which you can't put it's a, a little peace of mind, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, that fire resistant construction, that's been in the, the law in California uh, since 2008. New construction, that must include fire hardy roofing and siding, enclosed eaves, and uh, dual paned windows. Yeah, there also must be an ember resistant buffer zone five feet wide around properties. And as of now, Colorado has no such laws, mm -hmm. but you can still do it if you want to, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, it was so innovative at the time, right, to think about the fact that anybody would create a channel of weather 24-7 mm -hmm. and anybody, you know, would, like crave that. Right. And they did. And There's they did like it. super fans yeah. out there. Um, I mean, I'm one of them. We all, I think we all are, We right? all are, yeah. You kind of yeah. have to be, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah, pretty crazy. 40 years ago, uh, that moment. Actually, we know when it actually launched, the time it launched. Are we allowed to give that I away? I don't know. You know, why not? It was... Eight <laughs> No one's talking to us. <laughs> it was uh, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. At night. 8 p.m., the yeah. launch. The switch went on at 8 p.m. The pop quiz was like, was it 8 a.m.? Was it noon? Was it 8 p.m.? And that was my last choice. It was last, yeah. Yeah. But, hey, 8 p.m. and still going strong. Yep. There you go. All right, we'll have lots more of that. It's surrounding our uh, gearing up here to our 40th anniversary, which is next week. Wow, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. All right, well, what's crazy is another cold front. Yeah, that, that is actually. Is marching east, <laughs> keeping things chilly, bringing some showers as well. Let's focus in on yeah. what we've got here, show you what we've got. And essentially, uh, we've got some showers into the southern. <laughs> and I know it's not, it's, yours, it's not yours in Cleveland, um, but let's go here into the plains and talk about what's coming next. We've got a look outside in um, Oklahoma right now. Sun is out. Looks like a beautiful day, right? Trees are really starting to blossom there and um, grass is starting to green up. But all the signs of spring that you see there are going to translate into this. Some storms coming our way by the time we get into the end of the week. So watching for the risk of thunderstorms, Oklahoma into parts of Missouri, all the way up across the northern plains will have rain and storms. The players start to line up by the time we get into Thursday. It'll start tomorrow, Wednesday, late in the day. There'll be some thunderstorms that pop. We'll see this maybe across northeastern New Mexico, the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, western Kansas. Everything should be fairly isolated, but there could be some pockets of severe weather. So that's something that we watch out for. This is Wednesday, about 3, 4 o'clock into the early evening, continuing here. Maybe Dodge City, 7 o'clock. Might not be a good time to think about taking that evening jog, right? We do have thunderstorms in the forecast coming through tomorrow evening. Now, they don't make a ton of progress east. They're weakening as they they go. However, we do have another area on Thursday that we're going to watch. And now I think we'll see more enhanced coverage all the way from Texas to south of the Red River, Wichita Falls, southward towards uh, Archer City, and then all the way up into Kansas, including around Wichita, we've got that risk of thunderstorms going severe. So your forecast on Thursday, you've got that zone that we're keeping an eye on, and then a broader area where we could just see general rain of storms, like across parts of Missouri. Friday, we keep it going there. We add in the northern plains, and on Friday, we could see 
see severe weather here across parts of uh, Missouri, and then, then we'll watch Illinois. I mean, this is an extended length of time of watching for a number of days of storms. Now, for the last couple of years of not traveling, more people plan a trip this year. Yes, it's going to be busy, and COA keeps its finger on the pulse of campers in the U.S. Joining us now is Whitney Slans this summer. So gas prices, when they rise. So Whitney, who is the typical camper? Or, or is, is there really even a, a typical camper? People more likely to camp in a tent. Um, RVs seem to have gotten a lot of pop popularity, but is, is now, you know, everyone back to tent camping? That sounds good to yeah. me. Uh, that's so, so many options. You've named a few of them here. Which <laughs> do you think have you seen uh, sort of the biggest boost? We really see all fancy and glamorous as the name might make it sound really, you know, being able to rent the gear and not have to pack all the gear and, and unpack it too. That's a big benefit of glamping, right? So I'm thinking about going camping. What if I get to, uh, I'm worried about the weather while I'm camping there? Uh, what kind of safeguards are in place? Sure. Whitney Scott with KOA. Thank you so much for your time today and great information. And you got us, you know, excited about a camping trip. Yeah, you know, I was telling I was you earlier, I've, I've never been camping. Yeah. So, you know, I've got to look at all these options. A little extreme for me the first go around. I would try it. Yeah. I but know. I want to have the option of having something a little... Ooh. All right, good pick. Uh, how about we head to the Northern Plains as we get a chance to give a little shout out to the state of South Dakota. It is National South Dakota Day. We're going to visit Pierre, the state capital. Name there in Pierre, yeah. South Dakota. Not a bad looking day. A bit breezy uh, with those temperatures. That That's right there. There you go. That's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, our question of the day is all about camping. So we want to know what kind of camping. A little camping. Somewhere. Trip, you know. Oh, yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you got all the bells it? and whistles. Or would you oh, Ooh. something along? It's I a think big. It, um, but I it would be I fun. Drive it. My car is, like, big <laughs> enough. That's it. Nothing. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's continue to the out there here as we work our way in towards the week. Trying to get another group is getting ready yeah. to go up yeah. pretty soon. Yep. I'm yep. telling you, it's like, like. Conversation when they launched. And we said, mm -hmm. you know, when is this going to be some, so routine that you don't? like sort of yeah. awful at every single launch. I mean, if we keep it going like this. It's wild. They got the highest number of votes. So <laughs> the folks in uh, Pierre really got to vote and they beat out cities like New York, LA, and Chicago. That's really cool. Yep. Was it still like, was it $400 for Boardwalk or something? I don't, in the special edition, who knows what it is, but right. it would have been the most expensive. <laughs> it would have been the most expensive, <laughs> yes. All right, well, our question of the day. Is a mm -hmm. Might trip. look a lot different. Yeah, 10,000 10, miles. 10,000 miles, though. Wow. It's cool. All right. Good stuff. Thanks for chiming in with all your comments and pictures as well. We always appreciate that. All right. Well, how about we head to the Blue Ridge Arts and Crafts Festival? This is actually happening in West Virginia uh, this weekend on Saturday. And look at that forecast for you. I don't think you can beat that. Getting into the 60s by the afternoon, and there's going to be 60 Blue Ridge mm -hmm. artisans to check out. A good bit of live music. There'll be food trucks as well to enjoy. Uh, and it's free to go check it out. Not free to eat the food, <laughs> but free to go check out the art. Let's go to San Antonio. You've got your mac and cheese fest this weekend. Historic St. Paul Square here. Local restaurants will be offering up their spin on your favorite childhood food, mac and cheese. <laughs> Mid-80s there in San Antonio. Looks like a mixture of sun and clouds. All in all, I'd say not a bad looking. Yeah. Is your son, does he like the fancy mac and cheese or he just like want the box? He goes through phases. He used to love mac and cheese. Now, he doesn't even. He doesn't like mac and cheese. I was cheese. like, what kid doesn't like mac and cheese? <laughs> well, mac and There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, don't take him to that festival. <laughs> we go to uh, Cupertino, California for the Cherry Blossom Festival here. This is at the amphitheater. Beautiful weather. Temps are going to be in the 70s on Saturday.
Let's start off the show with a little poem for you. Roses are red, violets are blue. We're looking at a wet start to the day and some cooler temperatures too. So who needs to grab an umbrella and a jacket as they head out the door? We have the answer. But our soggy story doesn't end there. April showers are going out with a bang. The good, the bad, and the cities that are getting left out. A lot of rain, by the way, actually in places that we need it. We're going to detail that for you. On America's Morning Headquarters, I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams. Alongside meteorologist Jordan Steele and Kelly Cass, we're going to start off in the Northeast with a boundary that is stretching out like this from the north to the south, like a lot of you are doing right now as you wake up. you got to stretch for Pilates. Stretching, that's stretching. a two-way stretch. Okay. Yeah, if So. You will. Now, this is a look at our water vapor imagery. This is a moisture in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. Notice it's red, so that means it's dry. We do have some moisture here, and then we have a whole heck of a lot of moisture. We have the green down into Brownsville. And so there's a lot of it there, but the thing is, is the atmosphere is layered. And so though you could have, you know, a lot of moisture in the mid to upper levels, doesn't mean you have it at the surface. Now, here's the other thing, as this front is moving east, it's running into some drier air. So you have to keep that in mind when you're thinking about the forecast. So that would be an indication of, okay, we're not going to see this huge, you know, flooding rain event with the system coming through. And look at it. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's a little puny, but it does have some clouds and some showers. But holy cow, lots of moisture down into Brownsville, not only from the mid to upper levels, but all the way down to the surface. And we do have a flash flood warning here right into Brownsville. That is until 7 o'clock uh, local time. So flash flood warning means that flash flooding is imminent or it's occurring. And we'll let you know if we get reports out of this area. But very heavy rainfall for us here into Texas. Now there's our big long front that's going to be moving east. We'll get some daytime heating. There's some instability associated with this. But as you can see, not too robust for us. Maybe a little bit of hail and maybe some of those gustier winds. But overall, this will be for the most part, a non-event, though there's going to be those one or two people that do experience some bigger boomers with this. There it is from West Virginia, stretching all the way back into Louisiana. Everything is going to be coming east, and so there is that possibility of some thunderstorms. Notice it's from Virginia down really towards Georgia, where you'll see that, and that will be uh, later in the day once we get that daytime heating. That will help enhance some of these storms. There you go as we head into the afternoon hours. Jordan? All right. State, yes, that is Kansas. Who doesn't love a beautiful sunflower? Just fantastic to look at, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. Haze down to Clovis. The chance of some thunderstorms tomorrow. I think it'll be more an afternoon thing and into the evening thing. Look at our time frame for us here. As we roll through the day, we'll see some showers, maybe a pop of thunder as it comes through. But as you can see, it's, it's kind of contained and small and it will be lasting into Thursday morning. As we head late into the week, Thursday into Friday, there is a chance for storms. Now again, we're not expecting some huge massive outbreak, but we certainly have that chance for storms. And they're going to be east of the dry line. This is warm moist air. This is warm dry air. You need that moisture. You, that gives us that buoyancy, that oomph in the atmosphere. And obviously you need it to rain out. The dry line separates those two. Those two. We also have a warm front. It's going to be right in the sector where you're going to have the best chance of storms coming in. And that's where we'll see also the moisture coming up. A little bit of colder air uh, coming in too behind the system. But notice that we have a lot of energy. That's what indicates this orange that's coming northbound here for those thunderstorms. And of course, it's getting fed. This is like, you know, giving soda to somebody is that moisture coming up. So the potential for rain, this is Thursday through Sunday. Some of us could see some heavier showers. Kansas, Missouri, over into uh, portions of the Ohio River Valley. GFS has a little bit farther west and north for us, but regardless, it's going to be wet. So Wichita, temps stay pretty consistent, and as does the forecast, showers and thunderstorms with a little bit of sunshine mixed in, so at least we get some breaks, Jordan. It's not a total washout. All right, we're going to get some stronger thunderstorms. Now, we want to switch gears to the other side of the spectrum. In 2020, wildfires destroyed nearly 3,600 homes in the U.S. Almost a third of those were lost in one single blaze, I should say, the Marshall Fire that swept through Boulder County, Colorado as the year ended, and rebuilding is getting underway with favorable spring weather, and it makes sense to build back smarter and safer. Our national correspondent, Justin Michaels, tells us that's exactly what Boulder County is doing. Top of that, that was a good looking home as well, right? So you can now have stuff that can protect you and look good as well. Now that was in Colorado. In California, fire resistant construction has been the law in California since 2008. New construction must include fire hardy roofing and siding, 
in closed eaves and dual pane windows. There must be ember resistant buffer zone five feet wide around properties. As of now, Colorado has no such laws. So let's have a look at that threat for wildfires and where we do have the biggest issues as we go through the day today. It's kind of these same areas, Kansas, as you head down into New Mexico. One of the big issues will be the winds. Those are going to crank up. You know, the winds are very calm in the morning. Once you get that daytime heating, you're going to get differentials of temperatures in the atmosphere. That gets our winds kicking off. 40 mile an hour winds even stronger than that in some places as we head into our Wednesday morning. It's a headache. Yes, it's frustrating, but at least we can fix that. All right, we do have a jet stream that's screaming in, bringing some moisture here into the Midwest. We also have upper level energy that's coming down and you're going to be able to see what's really cool. I think is that upper level energy kicking off the snow and some rain and then our surface feature also kicking off snow and the rain. They work together kind of separate, you know, like not they don't work separate, I guess I should say, but you have two different batches of rain and snow is what I was more thinking of. And that rain is going to get into places like Rhode Island. So if you're thinking about playing a little tennis per RI.gov, Rhode Island was home to the first national lawn tennis champion uh, championship, the priest precursor to the U.S. Open in 1881. So today, not necessarily a great day to play tennis outdoors, maybe indoors, though if you've never played on grass, I'd recommend it. It's just a totally different experience. The ball doesn't bounce as much. It'll really get you moving because it kind of psychs you out when you're not used to it. Uh, Buffalo, as we head into tomorrow morning, perhaps a little bit of snow for you, and that will expand and then disappear as we head into the afternoon hours. Overall, the rain's going to be on the lighter side, so your lawns will be happy to be getting this coming in. And a closer look at the nation's capital, D.C., showers and thunderstorms as we head into the dinner time, and they clear out so you can sleep soundly here into Washington and it will be nice and dry tomorrow morning. That snow eh, about one to two inches, but it's going to be May. Rain is a possibility where you are. It's important for you and your family to have a plan on what to do to help stay connected and safe ahead of potential flooding. We've partnered with T-Mobile to bring you some advice to get you prepared on the Weather Channel. Ooh. Jordan, I wish we could do our show like live with them, you know, at one of these situations. Just oh, like that would be cool. Step through it with them and see what it's like. It's always so nerve wracking if you're in like